Let's go to Canberra now and catch up with defence strategist Paul Dibb, a long-time defence strategist. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Paul. Fascinated to hear from you about your thoughts uh, this week about Australia's vulnerability to the north. Now, I know you've been writing intelligently about this for decades, but the billion-dollar investment in upgrading the Tyndall Air Force Base uh, near Catherine is obviously a sign that the government is now taking this seriously. What more do we need to do to reduce that vulnerability to Australia's north? The billion dollars in Tyndall is strategically very important. It will allow B-52 bombers from the United States or Guam to operate in and out of Tyndall. And that will make Tyndall the most important regional air force base south of Guam, south and west of Guam. The other thing that's happening that was announced last week by the State Department, the State Department has given approval for the Austral Royal Australian Air Force to acquire 200 long-range anti-ship missiles. The range is classified. The unclassified figures are it may have a range of five to 600 kilometres, which is a nice distance, and you could operate it from the Joint Strike Fighters and the F-18s. The F-18 Super Hornets were only cleared for this missile operationally last November. And here we are, the State Department clearing us to buy about $1.4 billion of these missiles. That's the good news. The bad news is, as I've said before, um, our bare bases uh, in the north, uh, Learmonth near Northwest Cape, uh, Curtin near Derby in the north, and uh, Sherga near Weeper on Cape York Peninsula have been run down. Uh, they um, uh, have difficulty with fuel supplies, some of which are trapped in uh, from uh, the east coast of Queensland, for instance, and their ammunition and missile holdings are poor. In addition, uh, we now have, for the first time since the Second World War, a major power operating militarily in our strategic space in Southeast Asia and the South China Sea that now has the military capabilities, should its intentions change, to threaten us with little warning. And just that a, country starts with C yes. and ends with A and yeah. is not Cambodia. Yes, we're obviously talking about China and we'll be hearing more about China oh, later really? in the program. But just tell us about these bare bases. These are bases that are not fully yeah. operational now, but they're obviously airstrips, supplies of ammunition and, uh, and fuel for use in, at time of war or emergency. Yeah, look, we introduced them uh, in the um, mid to late 80s. Um, the one at Learmonth has just been used, of course, for um, transporting Australians uh, out of um, Asia, out of China, to Christmas Island. Um, they were never meant to be full operational bases, but in time of conflict, they will be crucial. And it's time we built up the fuel supplies, the ammunition, the missiles, and hardened them because we designed those bases to be precisely within in-flight refueling range of what we call the classic Hornets. We have a large country to defend, and European fighters and so on simply don't have the range. So there's a whole bunch of things pressing down on us on which... That for the first time we're facing a country with the military capabilities pressing down on our strategic space to our north and our east. Now the way you've talked about the Tyndall upgrade, you see that very much as an alliance upgrade, as an upgrade that will allow it to, uh, uh, to uh, utilise uh, US assets as much as anything. What else do we need to be focused on? You've talked about perhaps longer range missiles, either, either operated by Australia. Would there be, uh, is there any worthy consideration of having American missiles based on Australian soil, or would that be a step too far? I think so far it's a step too far. But, you know, our strategic circumstances are seriously changing. And it's about time the Australian population was brought up to speed on this. Um, Secretary of State Pompeo, when he was in Sydney for the Osmin talks in June, you may recall, raised with Prime Minister Morrison the possibility of establishing some American missiles in the future. And my, my impression is that Morrison was very 
gently and kindly push that back. I think for the future, if we want to have long-range, land-based, anti-ship missiles in the north of Australia, and there's no reason why we shouldn't, it's our country, our sovereignty, it might be a step too far to have American missiles, but we could have Australian long-range missiles and a whole bunch of them being designed right now as we speak in America. And of course, you might well have uh, American bombers, submarines and aircraft equipped with such missiles in any case visiting us. Just finally, Paul, uh, you talk uh, here mainly about air assets and, uh, and missiles. You just mentioned their submarines. What about submarines? What is our vulnerability when it comes to the running down of the current Collins-class submarines and the new generation which, uh, which we're waiting uh, to see from the, the, the French design? Uh, are we exposed there? Surely uh, submarine patrols to our north and northwest are crucial. Look, it's another part of our strike arm, uh, you know, which we ran down once we got rid of the F-111s. Then we had troubles with the Collins, as every first-of-class submarine has, in my experience. My information now is that we could put three, maybe four Collins class to sea simultaneously. They are probably amongst the quietest, if not the quietest, conventional submarine in the world. The problem is it takes time for them to deploy out of Coburn Sound in uh, Western Australia into Southeast Asian waters or from being based in Sydney into the South Pacific. I'm not an expert on where the French are like you. I read the, the newspapers and watch the Senate estimates and so on. Uh, it's going to be a real challenge. Having said that, the French have built nuclear ballistic missile submarines and nuclear attack submarines, so they should know a thing or two about building submarines. Of course, the challenge is that this is not a nuclear submarine, and they haven't designed a conventional uh, diesel submarine for a long time. The good news will be that the combat system will not be a problem. It is an American combat system out of the American Virginia nuclear attack submarines. The issue is going to be build, building a very large, very quiet, conventional submarine with a culture that is very different from ours, the French culture.